Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this webinar, which will be focusing on maximizing your education benefits. My name is Jana Adams, and I am one of the training coordinators on the California Transition Assistance Program team here at CalVet. And I want to welcome you guys all to the webinar this morning. All right, let me just go ahead and get my mouse going here. Okay, so we have lots of great topics to cover today. Um, we've got um, a representative from East Los Angeles College, from which we also know as ELAC. She works in the Veterans Resource Center. We like to use the acronym VRC. You guys are gonna hear lots of acronyms today, but we are gonna walk you guys through all of them, don't worry. So we've got our VRC director here to talk a lot about education benefits. I'm also going to be talking about education benefits. And we have one of our local interagency network coordinators, Annette here, and she is going to be talking about some benefits that and resources that you guys can all um, obtain and also access. And then I'm also going to be talking about the California, uh, the, the CalVet benefits that you guys can access as well. Um, you guys probably already saw a copy of the agenda. We're going to try to keep on the times here um, or on time today. If you guys have any questions at all during this webinar, we, um, we recommend that you guys use the Q&A tab. There should be a bar either at the top or the bottom of your screen. You can just qu click on the Q&A tab, ask any questions. My coworker, Jennifer, is going to be um, taking those questions. If she can answer them right away, she'll respond. If not, we'll wait till the end of the webinar and we'll go through the questions aloud with um, whichever speaker can answer them appropriately. Um, and then while I'm talking, uh, my coworker Jennifer is also going to be putting lots of information, um, links to different resources and websites right in the chat tab. So you guys won't be able to um, type in our chat field or in that chat tab, because um, Jennifer will be putting lots of great information in there for you. Um, but you guys can ask any questions um, in the Q&A tab. So we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, and since we're talking about um, education today and utilizing benefits, we have a question for you guys. We want to know um, where you are in your education background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a poll right now. I'm going to go ahead and get this started. I'm going to go ahead and launch it. and. The poll has four questions on there. So if you guys just go ahead and click on whichever one um, relates to you. So what's your educational status currently right now? You can click on more than one if one of them relates to you. Are you currently enrolled for classes that are gonna start really soon or may have started depending on the quarter or semester you're enrolling in? Um, have you taken one or more courses uh, but not currently enrolled right now? Um, have you already earned a degree or a certificate? And um, um, Maybe you haven't taken any courses at all, but you're here today because you're interested in learning about benefits and resources, all about the education system, either for yourself or for any dependent or dependents that you may have. So go ahead and um, answer those questions. That way we can see um, some answers here. It looks like, um, gosh, it looks like everybody has answered already. I'm going to go ahead and go over it uh, just in case anyone can't see that. Um, it looks like 24% or 11 of us have um, are enrolled in courses. Um, we've got some folks. Um, we've got some folks that have taken some courses but not currently enrolled. Um, a lot of people already have degrees and certificates, and then um, we've got a handful of people um, that have taken courses but maybe you're interested for yourself or your dependent. So wonderful. Um, thank you for taking that poll. Um, so now we'll go ahead and we'll get going. So I kind of want to talk to you guys a little bit about who we are. Click on the screen here. Okay, so um, I mentioned to you that I'm part of the California Transition Assistance Program or CalTAP team. So who are we? So my team, and I'm not gonna read every slide verbatim, but this one is pretty important. So the CalTAP team is designed to inform and connect uh, veterans of all eras to their earned federal and state benefits. That's right, you guys. We are here to help you guys set get set up to be able to access your benefits and then whatever else you need, whether you need help filling applications, uh, whether you need help checking your disability rating to see if you um, see if you can qualify for these benefits, we're going to be here for you every step of the way. And we know that 
as you guys are um, going on through the years, the benefits and resources that you need today are going to be different than the benefits and resources you guys need in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years, so on and so on. So we're going to be here with you every step of the way. One of the ways that we can get you guys information on everything you can access is by putting information um, on our website and in our veterans resource book. I'll tell you what that is in a minute. Um, but we put it on our website and we break it up into five different what we call pathways. The core curriculum pathway, which I'm gonna go over very briefly today, that's gonna to tell you guys about the benefits and resources you can access by living in California. Education, we'll go over that today as well. Employment, how to get a job and all the things that go along with that. Entrepreneurship, starting your own business. And then service providers. This one isn't a pathway that we talk about often, but if you are a service provider or if you know of any, um, check out this pathway. It gives you lots of really great information. Something that's really crucial is how to work with veterans and um, how to interact with them. Things like that are in that pathway. So really great information. Um, so again, we put all this information out there so that way you guys are able to access this 24 hours a day, but then you guys can also contact us. Um, another way we do is by putting information right in the resource book. I have mine right here. What the best part about this resource book is on the back of it, there's an 800 number back here. And that 800 number lets you contact us at any time, as long as it's business hours, of course, from eight to five, Monday through Friday. But you can contact us at any time and we can go over any questions that you might have, um, things like that. So um, this is our website. You can just Google CalVet. This is what you'll see. I have lots of things underlined and circled on here. Lots of great stuff. Um, we are going to talk a little bit about the County Veteran Service Office later and how they can help. They're a great resource. They do um, lots of things. They're connected on the federal side as well. So they're um, a really great resource. You can find them in lots of different ways. And I'll go over that a little later. But the thing that's circled right in the middle under the laptop icon that is our webpage, the CalTAP webpage that's on the CalVet website. And this is where you're gonna find a lot of our information. So once you click on that CalTAP page, you're gonna see our pathways. I just talked about what those were. If you click on the core curriculum pathway, that's gonna get you to um, the different modules. This is how we set up our pathways on our web pages, And this is gonna get you right to where all the information is on where you can find our benefits. So I'm gonna go over some of those benefits for you really quickly. And then if you guys have questions more later or want more clarification on anything, give us a call or send us an email. I'm gonna give you all that information on how to contact us. Um, but that way you can learn more about um, any information that you need or any other resource you need. So um, CalVet offers a lot of really great benefits if you live here in California or if your dependents live here in California. The one that we get asked the most questions about, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this in the education section, is our college tuition fee waiver. It's an amazing program. Um, it's a way to have your dependents go to any state funded school which, which um, includes our community colleges, our state schools, and our UCs, um, without having to cover the cost of the tuition or any fees. You still have to cover cost of books, housing, things like that, but the cost of tuition and fees is completely covered. So great program. We'll go over that a little more later. Um, CalVet partners with a lot of different agencies. One of them is the DMV. So you can actually get the word veteran printed right on your driver's license or your California ID. And this signals wherever you go that you are a veteran. This um, gives you a way that you don't have to carry your 214 with you at all times. Um, if you may go to places, maybe like a, an example would be like you're going to Home Depot to buy some stuff and they always offer a veteran discount, or hopefully they always do still. Um, but they may say, oh, how can you prove you're a veteran? Oh, gosh, I got it on my license right here. You don't have to carry your 214. Um, they, off they also offer a motor vehicle registration fee waiver. You guys, that means that your vehicle registration fee waiver can be waived on one of your vehicles. You do have to have 100% disability rating. Um, there are some different qualifications on that. But if you have questions on that or think that you may qualify for that, Give us a call, give us a buzz, um, look on the look online on our website. You can see if you qualify that way we can um, we can get you um, we can get you set up with that benefit. Okay, if you guys are all um, interested in the outdoors, we offer reduced fishing and hunting licenses and there's also a no cost state parks pass. I love the outdoors, so this is a really great benefit to take advantage of. Um, there is also a disabled property tax exemption that you can qualify for. If you have questions on that, 
call us. I'd love to go over all the details with you. And then there are also things like business license, tax, and fee exemptions that you can also qualify for as a veteran. Um, these are all really great benefits. There's lots of information right in our resource book online. You can call us. That 800 number is on the back of the resource book. You're going to see it a bunch of times during the presentation as well. Call us and we can go over any of these benefits with you. Now, um, CalVet also has um, a lot of divisions, and um, this is so that we can take care of all the veterans that live here in California, because there are a lot of them in our state. Uh, the Veteran Services Division is where the CalTAP team, which is my team, uh, which is where we fall under at CalVet, and uh, there's lots of different services that we can provide. We're the outreach team, so we are out at military bases, all the college campuses, we're on webinars online. And we're making presentations and letting you guys know about the benefits and resources that you can that you guys can access and then how to access them. Um, we also have a home loans division, you guys. I don't know if you've heard of the, you can get a um, the federal VA home loan. Well, this is different. This is the CalVet home loan. It is a great program. You can use the CalVet home, um, you can use the CalVet home loans program with the federal VA home loans program. You can use them together, so it's like two benefits. So if you are at all interested in buying a home in the future, maybe you've started the process, maybe you need to refi, um, take a peek at our program. You can call us. Um, my coworker, Jennifer, is going, she's probably been putting lots of information as I've been talking, but um, she's gonna put in a gentleman's um, contact information. His name is Brad, he works for CalVet, he encourages us to give out his contact information so you can call him about this stuff. Um, call him with your personal situation because he'll be able to answer you directly and then see if you guys qualify for whatever you're looking for. Um, CalVet also has a women's veterans division and a minority underrepresented veterans division. Great divisions. We offer a lot of different resources for y'all and you have to check out our website on both or you want to check out the web pages on our CalVet website for them. Um, on each of the web pages, you can sign in with your email address, give them that, and they'll send you um, an email because you'll be on a roster. They'll send you an email monthly, weekly on kind of what's happening in California. Maybe different laws are passed, maybe different things are happening and they're going to be able to update you. Um, CalVet also has homes for long-term care. Um, they're scattered all over California. These are homes that um, you typically, um, I believe the age um, limit is you have to be 55 or older or depending on a disability that you may have. Um, you have to be a veteran, of course. Um, but these are homes that you can retire in. And depending on the level of care that you may need later in life, this is something to really look, um, look into and to plan ahead for. Like I said, there's homes scattered all over California. Um, everything is listed on our website or you can call us and we can walk you through all the information. Um, there are also cemeteries in California that are CalVet related. There are our national cemeteries, of course, but now there are state cemeteries here in California. Currently, we have three. I know there is a fourth one in the works down in the LA area. So again, it's something to plan for in the future. Um, there's lots of great resources and everything listed right on our website for information wise, or you can always contact us as well. Okay, and speaking of that, contacting us, lots of great ways to stay in touch with us. Lots of things on this screen, I know, but we always ask that you send a non-DOD email to us at caltap at calvet.ca.gov. Someone from my CalTAP team is checking it on the daily and we are answering your questions. We're getting back to you. Um, so as long as it's during business hours, we'll get back to you um, usually within 24 hours. Um, you can register for what we like to call My CalVet. So basically, I'm going to skip ahead here for a second, but you go to our website. Um, on any web page on our website, you see this My CalVet circled in red there. You can log in once you already have a registration done, or you can register. By doing that, it kind of tailors our website to whatever you're going to need to find. It's going to ask you a lot of questions when you're registering um, to kind of find out what your, uh, what your veteran background is or what your current status is. And then it's going to maybe send you articles or um, kind of send you and um, lead you to places that you'll need to go based on what your personal needs are. And it's a great way to kind of um, follow on the website too. 
And once you do, um, once you do register for my Calvet, you're going to get um, either a weekly email from us on all the different webinars that are happening that we're putting on, so that way you know what's going on, um, or. Um, sometimes you might get um, a newsletter. Um, sometimes we do either a monthly or um, we might be switching to a quarterly newsletter, but it's packed full of information on what's happening in the quarter, what webinars we're doing, if you know we have any big events. Um, we put a lot of great information on there, so you might get that email too. Um, you can attend all of our webinars. Um, we're, you're going to see a QR code a little later for um, how to sign up on um, on Eventbrite. But then these QR codes that you see here, we've got the two social medias. Um, those are always really important. You can follow us. We put all of our events. Um, we have lots of announcements on there. So great way to follow us on social media. Um, we have the Calvet one right in the top left. That's our website. And then on the bottom right, that one is YouTube. You guys, we have a Calvet YouTube channel. And what's so great is this webinar is being recorded and all of the web, all the recorded webinars that we do, we put on our YouTube channel. They do go on our website, but they don't live forever on our website because we have so much content. They'll get erased depending on how much content is currently on. So by putting them on our YouTube channel, they live forever there and you guys can access them 24 hours a day, whatever information you need. So um, we also ask that you take a link to our survey. You're gonna see this link in this QR code a couple of times. Um, we're always asking for feedback, what we can do better. And then we wanna to know topics that you guys wanna know here or want to hear about as well. So a um, great place to do that is to fill out our survey real quick. Okay, um, I already talked a little bit about the MyCalvet, what that is. Um, this is an example of that weekly email that you guys would get, just talks about um, the different workshops that we're going to be hosting, and then various links on all of our different partners and um, different websites that you guys um, would be able to utilize um, being a veteran or a dependent of a veteran. Okay, if you guys haven't seen VA.gov, I highly suggest that you go to this website. Lots of great stuff here. Like I said, if you haven't been there, make sure that you go check it out. Um, this is my contact information. You guys are going to see it a whole bunch of times today. We put the 988, which is the veteran crisis line on all of our contact pages. We think that's really important. You never know when you're going to need it, or you're never going to know when you're going to be in a situation where you are with someone that might need the veteran crisis line. It's 988 and you press one. Um, you're going to see that a whole bunch of times today. So we think that's really important to have out there that everybody knows about it. Okay, I'm going to turn things over now to our local interagency network coordinator, or we like to use the acronym LINK. This is Annette, and whenever you're ready, Annette. Okay, yeah, I'm, re I'm referred to as a LINK, but basically what I am, I'm a field rep, one of the eight field reps for the state of California. Um, and next slide, please. So that you can see CalVet has divided the state into eight regions. Each color is a region with a coordinating link. I'm the Central Valley link, so I'm on the 99 all the time. Uh, my main goal is to do outreach and information. And as a team, we work together with state and federal resources to make sure you're aware of your benefits. But the most important thing we do as links is we build up a community of resources within our own regions. Um, I call them a safety net. So if there's a situation where someone needs, I've had people call, they had a hole in their roof or their air conditioning broke down. Um, I'm able to reach out to my local partners, the nonprofits, those veterans community partners, and we can get assistance to those individuals who need it, current and prior military service members. That's what we're all about. Next slide, please. So we provide outreach to service members, veterans and their families. Um, I'm at Lamore Naval Air Station probably a couple times a month. Uh, we wanna make sure People are aware of these individuals, military individuals are aware of their benefits before they even separate. I go to community colleges. A lot of times these are recently separated veterans. We also go to libraries um, in out, outside areas like uh, Los Banos, Kalinga, uh, Lake Ridge, uh, Lake Isabella, so that they have the information and the contact they need to get the resources to provide for them. And then by working with our community partners, we can make referrals and directly, like I'm not gonna say call 1-800, I'm gonna say call Peter Fong at SBA or uh, Zephyrina Morella at uh, the VA. So we wanna make sure we get you that information directly that you need. And then we assist with local emergencies. Uh, first five months of this year, I was deployed five different times to assist those military service members who impacted by the floods and by working with FEMA, Cal OES, 
and other state agencies, we were able to give them the assistance they need. And then we provide leadership and advocacy to local communities. By staying in touch with our partners, we make sure they're aware of the benefits, any changes or updates to benefits, but also if there's a gap in benefits or services, we can forward that to headquarters and see how we can address those. Next slide, please. So getting connected to your benefits, that's what I'm all about. And actually I'm the poster child for getting connected to your benefits. I served in the United States Army from 1975 to 1978. Um, I used my GI Bill, received my degree, got a VA home loan, and I thought that's pretty much it. But I didn't realize until 2010, when I started working for the state of California, that I'm eligible for additional benefits. So um, I have a service connect disability, didn't know that could happen, leads to additional benefits. I enrolled in VA healthcare, which is a huge benefit. And a lot of these benefits don't expire. You may not need them now, you may not need them in 10 years, but you might need them in 20 years. So make sure you're aware of what you're eligible for, uh, for employment and training. And these are the agencies I work with day in and day out. Employment and training, um, EDD has dedicated staff that work solely with veterans. I was an EDD vet rep for eight years. I know how hard they work to get veterans connected with employers. Um, so make sure that you connect with them. They're usually in the America's Job Center of California. They have all the tools that you can use, computers, scanners, copiers, uh, and at no charge to you. So they're out there for you. California state benefits, well, that's what CalVet is all about. And every state has different benefits and different eligibilities. But we rely on the County Veterans Service Office, the CVSOs. They are boots on the ground. They are there to assist you. They do 50% of the claims for compensation in the state of California. So they know the language, they know how to get you there. Um, and they also can help you with DMV paperwork, uh, educational paperwork, Whatever you need, they're there to assist you. And then healthcare, as I said, I'm enrolled in VA healthcare. And the great benefit to that was during COVID when a lot of places were shut down, uh, most of my appointments were through telehealth and VA Connect. So it's easy to stay in touch with your medical providers. And then the vet centers are there to help you and your family members. Next slide, please. So, this is my contact information. Uh, if you remember nothing else, make sure you get this. I can get you to this link in, who's in your area. I'm a service connected military veteran. Uh, I know all the resources. I've used all my benefits and I can do that soft handoff for you. So please stay in touch with us and we can help you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Uh, thanks so much, Annette. That was great information as always. And you guys, um, utilize her. She's such a great resource. And if for some reason you aren't in her area, that's okay to still reach out to her. If she doesn't know that resource, she'll tell you which link to call or you can call us or however, but she's an amazing resource. So thank you, Annette. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and move on. And um, so I know you guys came here today to hear all about um, kind of maximizing your benefit or maximizing your educational benefits and kind of what educational benefits are. Um, so I want to kind of give you some information and a lot of this information, again, is going to be kind of information overload, lots of detail and things, but all the information that I'm saying today can be found in the, let me grab it, the veterans resource book right here. Mine is like falling apart and tabbed up, um, or it's on our website. Again, you can just Google Calvet. You're going to see some stuff on our website. I'm going to lead you to that. Um, or you can call us at any time too. So, um, and there's, any question um, you can ask. There's never a um, there's never a bad question. All questions are good. So, um, and also keep asking the questions today because chances are a question you have probably someone else wants to know the answer to. So, um, this is how you find all the educational benefit resource info. Again, Google Calvet. You'll go to our website. You'll click on that CalTap pathway that was under the. Um, the laptop icon, you'll click on education pathway. So we talked about the basic um, CalVet benefits that you guys can access under 
core curriculum pathway. Now we're going to the next one, education pathway. And then we're not going to go over employment, entrepreneurship, or service providers today, but um, go on our website and check these pathways out because it's really great information. Call us if you don't understand something. We'd be happy to talk you guys through it. So, okay. So when you click on education pathway, this is what you're going to see, a couple different modules. Um, you're going to have modules that focus on topics um, such as school selection and then what you need to look for um, while building the most um, effective educational plan for yourself or your dependents. Um, there's also a module that provides a general breakdown of educational benefits um, that you would receive as a California veteran. So check this, um, check these modules out. Um, we're also going to provide some higher education information. That's um, who we have Jessica Peak from ELAC or East LA College is here today. She's going to come on after I talk about education benefits and talk to you more about the college education system here in California. Okay, so you guys are probably familiar with the GI Bill. Hopefully everyone on this call has at least heard of that term. If Again, if you need more details on it after I'm done talking today, please contact us or ask questions in the Q&A. Okay, so you're probably more familiar with the GI Bill. It's going to grant you 36 to 48 months of educational benefits um, that are eligible um, to veterans who are seeking undergraduates or graduate degrees, credentials, maybe on the job training, things like that. Um, now, I'm sure also that you're aware that there used to be a 15 year um, limit and um, there is no, there isn't an expiration date on your GI Bill now. It, there is a forever GI Bill uh, that you can utilize your education benefits whenever you're ready after you exit the military. Um, now, Purple Heart recipients, are eligible for the GI Bill benefits regardless um, of any kind of, of any type of um, gear requirement, anything like that. And um, any veterans who are um, affected by something like a school closure or uh, maybe a disapproval, um, the VA is able to, uh, they've got resources that they're able to um, get those funds back and restore whatever entitlements you guys had, they're able to do that. Um, some more information on the forever GI Bill. Um, GI Bill payments, they, um, they increase them um, for student veterans if they've served, even if they've served less than that 12, um, that 12 month mark. So individuals that have served just at least 90 days or more are eligible to receive 50 to 60% of their educational benefits. And this can result, you see it right there, about $2,300 more um, a year in um, any something like intuition assistance and services. So that's a really high number, even if you've just served at least 90 days. So that's really great. Um, and then for those of you that are planning on pursuing a STEM degree, um, the Forever GI Bill is going to offer an extension on that. Um, and that is um, that was created to encourage veterans to enroll in. And if you don't know what a, um, a STEM degree is, it's science, technology, engineering, and mathematical programs that are out there that are gonna take a little bit longer to graduate. So um, there are resources out there to extend um, your educational benefits. Um, what we recommend to find out where you're personally at with your benefits and how much you've used, how much you have left, utilize this 888 GI Bill one or visit their website. Um, they're gonna have the most updated information. If you call us or the County Veterans Service Office, or acronym for them would be CVSO. They maybe they won't um, have accurate or won't have um, accurate information. Um, so call the GI Bill hotline. That's what that's there for. Okay, so this is some more information, kind of about the science or about the STEM degree. There's a scholarship that goes along with that, kind of a long one. It's the science, technology. Or I'm so sorry. It's yes, it's the science, technology, engineering, math scholarship, or the Edith Norris. I think it is. Yeah, or the Edith Norris scholarship. So. Um, the, Edith Norris, the Edith Norris Rogers STEM scholarship was created to encourage veterans that need a little bit um, longer help with their education to offer them more benefits. So um, it's going to offer an extension for up to nine additional months, which um, and it can go up to $30,000 for that nine additional months. So that way you can complete your education or your degree that you're looking for. Um, there is um, priority will um, be given to individuals that require um, more credit hours to complete 
Um, and if you are entitled to, as long as you're entitled to 100% of your um, of your post 9-11 or GI Bill benefits. So um, this scholarship can't be used in junction with the Yellow Ribbon Program. We'll talk a little bit uh, more about that later. And it can also um, not be transferred to your dependents. So this is for the veteran um, themselves. And if you have more questions on the STEM scholarship, um, give us a call. We'd be more than happy to walk you through that a little bit more. Okay, so this is chapter 35, which is the Survivors and Dependents Educational Assistance. Um, this is going to grant you 36 months for eligible spouses and children of um, veterans that do qualify for this. Um, so this is out there. Um, it can be used in conjunction um, with the tuition fee waiver. We'll talk a little bit about that um, more later. Um, call us if you need more details on that, on your specific situation. That way we can walk you through this. Um, but um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more um, about uh, this a little bit later too. But um, give us a call. You can also look online on the website that we can give you more information on this. Okay, so um, veteran readiness and employment. You should, it used to be called VOC Rehab, um, but it's chapter 31. And um, this is a really popular program that veterans can utilize. So if you are a veteran and you have a 10% disability rating or higher, um, you may be eligible for, uh, for VR&E. Um, this is an, I know this is an employment benefit and we're talking about education benefits, but if the, um, if, um, you need more education um, to, that is going to require, or you're going to need more education that's required uh, because you have a disability, um, you can get more education paid for and kind of extend your benefits um, so that way you can complete um, more education to um, lead you to an, the employment benefit, which is what it is. So hopefully that all makes sense, but um, it basically will give you um, an extra 12 months of education. So this is something that you do have to qualify. I think on the next slide, it'll tell you. Oh, um, So in order to qualify this, you basically fill out an application. This isn't a CalVet benefit. So somebody from the federal side will contact you from vr &E and you will, they'll talk about your situation, um, try to get you to qualify for that. If so, you will have um, extra benefits that will, um, that will extend your education, which is really great. Okay, so what services do vr &E provide? Um, so all these things here, I'm not going to go through all of them in detail, but if you have a disability that's keeping you from um, doing a particular job that you are wanting to do, and that maybe you need more education for, or if you can roll that into your education so that way you can extend your educational benefits, um, these are all the services that vr &E can provide for you. So um, it's a really great service. Um, again, you just have to fill out an application. You are going to turn it in, um, it is a federal benefit. So um, you will turn that into them and that they will make the decision on that. Um, you can also call the 800 number on there and they can walk you through um, any of the application questions that you may have, things like that. You can also call us or call the CBSO and we can answer any questions um, on that for you as well. Okay, so there is this great tool out there on the VA website that you guys can search schools to learn what different, um, what different benefits schools are going to offer you. So it's called the GI Bill Comparison Tool. You can just Google that, or you can go to the VA website as you can see the arrow up there. You can search by name of the school or by just a location of where you think you're wanting to go to school. And this is just, um, an example of what could come up. So this is in um, Solano County. So this is up north in uh, Northern California, um, but these are a couple different schools. Um, and as you can see, um, the housing benefits or the BAH that stays the same because it's in the same um, county city, however that is going to work out. However, what's kind of cool about this tool is um, under where, the, uh, where that circle is, it says accreditation. It's gonna tell you, how many students are taking advantage of, um, of the benefits at that particular campus. So it looks like there's 291 students currently taking advantage of benefits right now. Um, however, at the California Highway Patrol in Solano, 
we don't have any current um, veterans taking advantage um, of their benefits there. Um, but pretty much there's any kind of school um, listed um, on this website. So this is a really great tool for you because as you can see on this next slide, this is just kind of a visual of showing you guys that um, education is expensive. Um, it's, um, it can be very necessary and very um, worthwhile, but it's expensive. So being able to utilize these resources as veterans and dependents, you guys are so lucky and please take advantage of them because um, the more we have these benefits and the more people are utilizing them, um, the longer they'll stick around and maybe they'll grow bigger and better. So um, as you can see, this is just a visual kind of different costs of things and um, it's expensive. So um, that's why we're wanting to kind of tell you guys um, just some different information to be able to um, be able to extend your benefits. And kind of on that note, um, this is, we like to call it utilization of benefits or kind of telling you um, in order to get your degree, you need 120 credits. Everyone kind of knows that. Um, so if you are enrolled full-time, you would be able to accomplish 116 of them if you go full-time. That means 12 units in the fall, 12 units in the spring, six in the summer. That would only get you 116. You need 120 to get that BA. And this is, we're talking 116 or 120 to get the BA of, of all credits that actually um, are useful. So you wouldn't be able to count probably that underwater basket weaving class that you love to take a couple of times. That's not gonna count towards those 120 credits. These are all classes that um, actually require you um, or are required to get that certificate or that degree. So we wanna give you guys some tips and tricks to extend your benefits and to get you, because um, full-time only gets you 116, you're gonna have to cover that other four units somehow um, on your own without the benefit. So we wanna give you some ways to kind of extend that so that way you're not having to cover the cost. So we're gonna give you guys what we like to call tips and tricks. So tip one would be take more than 12 units. So what we mean by that, um, an example would be maybe take 15 units in the semester. Um, now, make sure that if you are going to bump up your unit load to 12 or to 15 units, usually five classes, that you can handle taking five classes. Because if you're going to take more than 12 units, you want to make sure that you're going to be successful um, every single time. Um, so if you, um, if you, Oh, I can go to the next slide here. Um, by taking more than 12 units, um, there isn't going to be an issue um, with tuition because the GI Bill is going to cover it, whether it's 12 or 15. Um, and if you are taking one more class every semester, that means you should graduate um, or finish your degree or program um, usually a semester earlier um, or a little bit earlier, um, depending on if you can get all the right classes to get you up to that 115, or I'm sorry, that 120. Um, credits in order to graduate with your degree. So on the other side of taking more um, than full time, you could only certify at three quarters time. So what I mean by that is choosing to certify three quarters time would extend your benefit, but you would get only three quarters of that benefit or the BAH. So you would be getting less funds coming in but you would stretch out the benefit longer because you have less coming in, if that makes sense. So this would kind of, this would basically allow you to extend your benefits from 36 months to 45 months. So it allow you extra time to finish maybe high unit programs um, or to, uh, to be able to take longer to finish your classes. Um, so um, that, but since you're only covering three quarters time, remember you have to cover that other quarter time or the quarter of whatever money that you're needing to be spending. So just make sure that that works out for you um, in your personal situation. Okay. So our next tip would be to participate in a work study. And if you haven't heard of a work study, um, it's basically a way, it's basically like a student job. So um, this is a, a really great program. It's going to, um, it'll get, it'll earn wages for you, obviously, doing VA related duties. Um, what's nice about the work studies is um, when you, if you are the supervisor and you have a work study in your office, usually you know that they're there really to complete their education. So you're, they're going to be more flexible with your schedule. Um, that way your highest priority is going to be your classes and getting the best grades that you can, obviously. So that way you can graduate as quickly as you can. 
Um, and by earning extra money, this can offset any costs. Um, remember that there's no BAH in between semesters and quarters. So you've got to find some way to um, cover um, those additional months um, and weeks when you're not um, actually in class. So tip four, withdraw versus an F. So what we mean by that is um, if you are withdrawing from a class versus um, you take the class the whole time and you earn an F in the class and you fail. So a couple differences between those if you, um, if you don't know. Um, usually when you go, um, you obviously are all in, uh, most of you are probably all in school right now um, as from the poll. Um, but um, if you are enrolled in classes, usually a couple weeks in, there's a designated um, there's a designated date where if the class isn't working out for you for whatever reason, and it can be anything happening in your life, you don't like the class, it's not for you, whatever the case may be, you're able to drop that class. No questions asked, no problem. However, if you are, um, you are signed up to get these benefits and you drop a class, that means your BAH or your benefits could go down because you are not replacing those um, three units that you're dropping with a different class. So make sure that if you are going to drop the class for whatever reason, that, um, that you would be able to cover those funds that you, may, uh, that you may have to give back or that you won't get paid out for. On the other hand, if you are in this class, um, it's not working out for you for whatever reason. Um, could be lots of different reasons why you could fail a class. Um, and it happens way more out there in the world than people like to talk about. It is a common thing. But um, if you earn the F, it's not going to affect your benefits or your BAH, anything like that, but it's going to affect your GPA because you're going to have to retake the class and which is going to extend your educational career. So you're going to have to then cover the um, cover having to extend uh, taking more classes. So if you're in this situation, what we recommend is to not go through it alone. Um, you don't have to call us at CalVet. Um, you can if you want to. Uh, but what we're going to probably recommend to you if you do call us is that you go to um, A, the VRC, which I'm going to tell you what that is in a minute, um, but you go to the VRC on campus or you go to, a, um, a, which is where you'll find most likely um, a career counselor or a college counselor, some sort of counselor that you can talk about it with, um, or you can call a county veteran service office, but talk to somebody first before you make that decision. So that way you can walk through whatever's happening in your world to see what the best decision is, whether withdrawing or taking that F works best for you. Okay. Last tip. I told you we're going to talk about the VRC, which stands for Veteran Resource Center. Utilize you guys, utilize these. Um, just about every single college campus has a Veteran Resource Center or a VRC. Sometimes we like to call them Veteran Success, veteran success Centers. Um, or um, veteran, re veteran resource. And I know there's a third name for them and probably Jessica, when she comes on, she'll be able to tell me what that is. Um, but utilize these, you guys, these are great. This is a wonderful picture of what one um, does look like here in California. I'm not sure what school this is at, but this is a really great place where veterans and dependents can go. Um, um, for one, you, there's always um, usually coffee, water, tea, maybe some snacks if um, you need a break from class and you're um, feeling like you're a little hungry or thirsty. Um, there's always people in there. So there's going to be people in there for you to talk to. Um, there's going to be tables, desks, chairs, either someplace to hook your laptop up to, maybe computers, maybe a printer. That way you can study for classes, do homework, print something out, whatever you need to do, have some downtime on campus in a place where it's a little more secure and you feel comfortable. But what's great is everyone that's working or volunteering, maybe it's a work study in the veteran resource centers or VRCs or veteran success centers on campus, is that they are either veterans themselves or they're a dependent of a veteran. So they know the process. They probably have answered some of the questions that you may have or um, are just someone familiar that you can talk to because they're in the same situation as you. We all are, we're all able to always talk to people easier when um, you have a familiarity with them or you have a similarity with them. So um, head over to the v Veteran Resource Center. It should be your first stop when whatever campus you or your dependent is going to, because they are a great resource. Um, so whatever questions you may have, and also Jessica is going to talk a lot about them. She actually is a director of a Veteran Resource Center. So um, it's a real treat to have her here today. And she'll talk a little bit more about it um, when she comes on in a minute here. Okay, so let's talk a little bit now. Um, we talked about some tips and tricks on how to 
um, extend the educational benefits that you can access as a veteran or a dependent. Um, but now that, here are some different ideas for you of financial assistance that can be available to you. So um, FAFSA or financial aid um, is out there along with the California Promise. Um, now, basically, this, these are grant money that is given to you so you can go to college um, and have your tuition and fees paid for, basically. Um, the California Promise is for um, students who have not gone to community college and not started, I believe, not started their educational career. They're able to go to community college um, for free at no cost. Um, there are scholarships out there, you guys. There is just free money roaming around there. So um, you just Google anything. Um, you, there are tons of scholarships that you can sign up for. You have to do the work. Maybe it's filling out applications. Maybe it's um, writing a response, writing a paper, something like that. Uh, but they're out there. And then finally, there is a yellow ribbon program that can be used to help students cover the cost of tuition um, or other training outside of the public school system that, um, that, that costs a lot of money. So that's out there um, to offset any costs for you. Okay, you guys, the college tuition fee waiver for veteran dependents. This is one of the benefits that we probably get the most questions about. It is one of our best benefits that we offer. Um, it is offered so that your dependents can go to any state funded school. So any UC, any CSU, any um, California community college um, from their general education all the way up to their doctorate should they choose um, to go that far. Um, without having to pay the tuition or the fees at that school. Like, how great is that? Um, there are four ways to qualify. The plans are called Plan A, Plan B, Plan C, and Plan D. Um, the two most utilized plans are Plan A and Plan B. Um, veterans themselves just have to have a disability, a disability rating established. For Plan A, um, the veteran must have a 100% disability rating. The, the dependent that will be utilizing the benefit, um, they can't be over the age of 26 utilizing the, um, utilizing the tuition um, fee waiver. Um, and they, so they can't be over 26, but they can have a full-time job. They can be making any income that they want. If you do not have a 100% disability rating, but you have a disability rating between zero and 99%, you can qualify for plan B as the veteran. The dependent can be any age, there's no age limit, but there is a monetary limit. They cannot have a full-time job. They cannot be making more than what we consider to be the national poverty level, which I believe is 15,240 something, I wanna say. So we usually tell our dependents, you just can't make over $1,000 a month. That should qualify you for under, um, under plan B. So like I said, plan A and plan B are the most utilized plans. Um, if that scenario doesn't work for you, um, we can look into C and D for you, but we can talk about that um, on a personal basis and try to get you qualified. Um, the, de the veteran doesn't have to live in California. The dependent has to be a California resident. If you have questions, so that means basically you guys are living in Texas, um, at the veteran itself, you guys move to Texas, you're living there or Indiana or Mississippi, wherever you want to live, and, but you decide you want your dependents which can be um, your, your children or stepchildren, of course, to go to school in California. So they need to be in California. They just have to prove their residency. Sometimes it takes six months, sometimes it takes a year. Contact the school you're wanting to go to and ask them what their, um, what, what their rules are on um, what's considered to be a California resident. Sometimes schools can be different um, and, and it can be school to school um, or UC to UC, CSU to CSU. So. Uh, but it's just the dependent has to be the California resident. So great, great benefit. Um, if I miss anything, please ask us any questions you may have on that. Um, but again, one of the biggest benefits that CalVet does offer. Okay, you guys, um, now we want to talk about um, some higher education information here. I'm going to bring Jessica Peak on. And actually, I think I need to, you know, I put two sets of, here we go. There you are. Sorry, I put two sets of that in there. Not sure I did that, but like I said earlier, Jessica's here from East um, Los Angeles College or ELAC. She's not a CalTAP training coordinator. I didn't, um, I did not fix that. I'm really sorry, Jessica. She oh. is the director of the Veteran Resource Center, you guys. So, and she's also a counselor as well. She's going to tell you all about that. Sorry for that. But um, on the contact page at the end, 
her um, her real information is on there. It's correct. So sorry about that, Jessica. But whenever you're ready. Oh sure, yes. Thanks, Jana. And uh, that's no problem. I love this team, so I'm honored. <laughs> Fantastic. We'll <Perfect>. keep you. <laughs> so um, okay. So hello, everyone. I'm Jessica Peak. As Jana just introduced me, um, I am the Veterans Resource Center Director at East Los Angeles College. I'm also the Veterans uh, Counselor. I've been the Veterans Counselor for. 10 years going on 11 um, and just part of the VRC for that amount of time as well. Been a counselor for 15 years total. So um, definitely counseling is um, certainly a passion um, of mine. So I do want to let you know that if I don't, if I rush through my slides, um, please feel free to reach out to me. If you have any questions about higher education, whether it's for yourself, for your kids, um, your spouse, you can reach out to me. I, I won't try to enroll you into ELAC, I promise, unless you really want to attend, but I will help guide you. Um, I can help guide you anywhere throughout California within our um, higher education system. So feel free to use me as a higher ed resource. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so this first um, slide basically shows us the hierarchy here, um, the structure of higher education. So we start off with our high school diploma, um, we move on to, some of us move on to community colleges to start there and transfer on to the four-year university. Our community colleges do offer vocational certificates and associate's degrees. Uh, we also offer transfer pathways into the Cal States, the UCs, private universities, and pretty much any university that a student decides that they want to go, even if it's out of state. So, um, so starting your education, definitely that foundation does come from our high school roots. Some of us don't have high school diplomas or GEDs, and you're still actually, you know, you can continue your higher education pathway. The only, um, the only uh, barrier you'll see with not having that di diploma or your GED is you won't be eligible for financial aid, which is why a lot of our students do, you know, decide if they don't have their diploma to go ahead and earn their GED, sometimes concurrently while they're at a community college. So community colleges offers those different, you know, options to get started and to pursue um, your education. Next slide, please. Okay, so throughout California, we do have 116 community colleges. Uh, 15 of our colleges, uh, they do offer bachelor's degrees, whether they're a BA or a BS. And the difference between our degrees that are offered at a community college versus a four-year university is that our, our community college uh, four-year degrees essentially are more geared towards like vocational occupations. So there are occupational types of degrees. One example is West LA College. They do offer um, a BS degree in dental hygiene. Now that's not a degree you're gonna find at UCLA or UC Irvine or even Cal State LA. So typically our community college de uh, four-year degrees or bachelor's degrees are designed for those um, professions that are a lot more occupational um, in theory. Next slide, please. Our Cal State University system is a public university system, and there are 23 campuses spread throughout California. Now, in general, we do have our, um, well, the Cal States do have their, their very basic um, guidelines for admissions, but every campus is going to have very specific um, eligibility requirements for uh, transfer or for first time uh, freshmen as well. So it's always important that wherever you decide that you want to attend or a family member wants to attend, that they do look up that specific university and take a look at their admissions requirements because they're all going to have some differences along the way. Next slide, please. The UC system is composed of 10 campuses. The UCs are also a public university, just like the CSUs. Um, there are 10 campus, all, campuses all together. Nine of them are undergraduate and graduate campuses, whereas one of them, it's UC San, UC San Francisco, they're graduate and professional only. So you do have an option for all other nine campuses, however, uh, to get that undergraduate degree if you're looking for that. Um, and one question that always comes up is, what's the difference between the CSUs and the UCs? We know community colleges don't offer a four-year degree at most of them. Um, select ones do, but not all. So when we look at the four-year degree, we're considering the CSU versus a UC. So what's the difference? 
So a CSU is, has historically been um, known for preparing graduates for the working world. So many of their degrees that they offer, such as administration of justice or criminal justice, is very hands-on. And so those are the types of degrees that the CSUs always started with, whereas the UCs have always been more research-oriented. So many of their classes um, are very uh, theory-centered, as opposed to the Cal States, where they're, they've historically always been hands-on. So that's a big difference. Over time, though, the same types of degrees are being awarded at both the UCs and the Cal States, but the biggest difference would be theory versus more hands-on. Um, that would be the biggest difference. So altogether though, they both, both systems are, are public university systems and both systems offer the four-year degree that you're looking for. Next slide, please. Okay, so this slide essentially tells us that the higher the degree that you have, the lower the unemployment rates will reflect. Um, so it's definitely, you know, a, a, true example of how higher education is certainly an investment. And of course, you have that benefit of having VA education benefits and also for your dependents and um, your kids and your spouses of having the CalVet fee waiver as well. So please just make sure that you are utilizing those benefits towards your education because it can bring your family up to that next level of success um, for all of you. Next slide, please. Okay, so why community college? Well, community colleges, to start, provide time to determine career goals. So many of our vets come into our VRC, meet with us, you know, with their counseling appointments, and there are so many that don't know exactly which career they have in mind. They just know that they want to go to college, and that's okay. Whether you come in not so certain about your major or completely certain about your major, whether you're 18 years old with that you know, indecisiveness or even 30 years old with that indecisiveness. That's why we started a community college because you're allowed to take these classes or that kind of give you that perspective from different types of disciplines that you may have never even considered. So I've had our students um, switch from, I wanna become an engineering major. So they'll start as an engineering major and then maybe within about two semesters into their studies realizing, all right, I took the psych one class and I really am intrigued by psych. I wanna to switch to psychology and we make it happen. We switch it over. And that's what a community college allows you to do, that flexibility to figure out exactly what that pathway is gonna look like for you. Um, in doing so, we do charge $46 a unit that's across all of California. No community college will have um, higher fees or lower fees than the $46 basic tuition. We do charge other fees, however, I will put that out there. So there is a health fee that gets charged, there's parking that you'll have to pay for if you're going to purchase a parking permit. But aside from that, tuition rates is all the same across California. There's the California College Prom Promise, which used to be norm uh, formerly known as the, as the BOG fee waiver. Um, now, this is kind of confusing, to be honest with you. It's confusing for a lot of students because we hear advertisements saying your first two years are free, but the thing is, it's also based on income eligibility. So just like the CalVet fee waiver um, option that Jana was talking about, for the California College Promise, there is a, um, an income criteria to be eligible. You also have to make sure that you carry, that you have less than 100 units. Um, to continue with the California College Promise, and also your GPA has to be a 2.0 or higher. So you have to be in good standing. So it's not that everyone will receive this two years for free. There is criteria that you have to meet. Um, and for some of our some of our um, dependents and spouses who aren't eligible for the California College Promise, they, that's where they use the Cal the um, College Fee Waiver from CalVet. So that's really important to know exactly what the differences are there and why would you need a college fee waiver from CalVet compared to, I heard about this California College Promise, well, I'll get two years for free. So it's important to look into all of those options and choose the one that's best for you. Community colleges also offer um, CTE short-term certificate programs. These are great because we see a lot of, a lot of veterans um, that will come 
back to a community college with degrees, with bachelor's degrees, master's degrees. Um, I saw a high percentage of our attendees today for this webinar already have degrees and certificates. So many, uh, many veterans come back to earn these short-term certificate programs because they add to your resume. They'll help you get that next promotion. Um, you have a degree already. Why not find some specialties that you can add to your current um, skill set? So that's what certificate programs will offer to pretty much any student trying to attend um, a community college. Transfer guarantees to select UCs and all CSUs. So essentially, if you plan to go to a UC, there's something called the transfer admission guarantee. Our TAG programs are available at six of our UCs. Um, you can always look up the TAG um, website. I highly recommend it. Typically, you need about 30 units out of the 60 that you need for transfer. And the GPA can vary. One example is UC Riverside requires a 2.7 GPA at 30 units um, if you're going into any of the education majors, whereas UC Irvine has a 3.4 GPA requirement at 30 units for all of their majors. So the schools will have different criteria for eligibility for TAG. But the thing about TAG is that at 30 units, which is halfway through your pathway to transfer out to one of those UCs that are um, that use TAG, you would be conditionally accepted at the 30 unit mark. And as long as you maintain the courses you said that you were gonna take and your GPA, you're pretty much in at that university once you're ready to transfer. So it's peace of mind and it's a great program to look into and it's only at select UCs. All CSUs do offer transfer guarantee um, into their university, but specifically what kind of like gets you is for each major, there are different, um, there's different criteria. Some majors are more impacted and harder to get into than other majors at the CSUs. So while you might get a transfer guarantee into let's say Cal State LA, it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get into your number one major choice, which is psychology because it's highly impacted. So this is why it's so important to work with a counselor once you start attending whichever community college you decide or your family members decide, go and see a counselor to make sure that you're planning out your pathway um, um, the best way that, that works for you. Next slide, please. So priority registration is provided to veterans for up to four years. Um, that's part of legislation, but check with your admissions departments um, at the community college because many of us, we adhere to legislation requirements, but some of us go above and beyond. So with us, if you're at ELAC and you're just taking classes just to take classes and you've gone past four years because you're you know, doing it more for, I don't know, just earning a lot of different certificates, you have a degree already, or you're just trying to find that community. And we have students that will continuously enroll year after year just to stay connected, especially our veterans and sometimes our aging veterans. So to stay connected. And so, um, so if I have a student who's been with us for four years and they're gonna start going into their fifth year, we're gonna continue to give him or her priority registration. So for us, we do go above and beyond and many of our community colleges do the same. Um, Priority registration is also offered the CSUs for up to four years. Again, that's all legislation, so it's law for us to provide that, um, and we're more than happy to. In-state tuition rates, you want to check with your admissions office for this because oftentimes our veterans do enroll into um, community colleges, and it turns out that they're not a California resident. So if you're not a California resident, then you're charged out-of-state residency. However, if you're gonna be using your VA education benefits, and this applies to dependents and spouses as well, then you will automatically be um, given that in-state tuition rate as long as you fill out the paperwork and then we make those changes. So that again is also uh, legislation. So please make sure that you do know whether or not you're a California resident. And when you apply, if you stated that you lived elsewhere within the past year, Follow up with your Veterans Resource Center and we'll help you out with that paperwork or follow up with your admissions office to make sure that you are um, given that in-state tuition rate. Um, almost all California community colleges have Veterans Affairs offices. Um, 
we like to call them veterans resource centers. I know there were a few names that Jana was trying to think of, and I actually wrote some of them down to you just so that I could remember, but they could be called a veterans resource center, a veterans success center. Um, Las Cositas up north has a veterans first program. And then we also have veterans services. So it's kind of like, you know, we have so many different titles and names for our departments and we all do the same. So if you go on your campus that you decide to attend, look for the department that has veterans in it. <laughs> so whether it's, even if you ask someone, just ask them, where's the veterans office? Um, if you ask where's veterans affairs, some of our people on campus, faculty, staff might think that you're actually thinking of the VA, Veterans Administration, but they think it's Veterans Affairs of VA and it really confuses a lot of people. So just letting you know, just ask for the Veterans Office when you get to your respective um, school. Next, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so where do you start? How do you start? You wanna apply. So you wanna go to CCC apply to get started at a community college. You wanna see, what the colleges offer, you might actually live in between two colleges. So it might be easy for you to go to either one. So you need to figure out which one is gonna be the best fit for you. So do your research. Once you've decided where you want to attend, apply. So you can apply online, you submit your application. Um, you wanna make sure that you're filling out paperwork for the California College Promise Grant to make sure and see are you eligible or not. Um, and also you wanna apply for financial aid. You want to go to the FAFSA website and find out if you're eligible for any grants. Um, they'll also let you know if you're eligible for loans. I always suggest if you don't need to take a loan out at a California community college, don't do it. Take the grants though. That's free money and they're giving it to you. A lot of our veterans also think, I don't need it. Give it to someone else who needs it more. That's not how it works. So there's money in, there is money allocated to financial aid to pro provide enough for any student attending. So make sure you apply anyway. If you're gonna use your VA education benefits, you can also use your benefits together with financial aid. So it's not double dipping. A lot of our vets are also, you know, weary of that. They say, is that double dipping? Can I do that? It's not double dipping, it's allowed. So if you're allowed to use financial aid together with your VA education benefits, definitely do it. Another note for financial aid is that Grants are actually um, only offered until you get your bachelor's degree. So at the graduate level, it's only loans. That's exactly where you wanna see if you can save your GI Bill, figure out how to hold on to it until graduate school, if you decide to attend grad school. Because at grad school, that's where your debt accumulates. And when using your GI Bill, you'll be, you'll be leaving a master's program, even a PhD program debt free. And that is amazing. So work with your Veterans Resource Center, again, with your college counselors to see how you can figure out what that pathway will be, be like to save you money and make the most out of your GI Bill as your investment. Next slide, please. Um, the transfer path for California Community Colleges. Definitely you wanna have 60 units to transfer. I'll just leave you at that note. Without 60 units, even at 59 units, the universities, both the UCs and Cal States, will ask you for your high school transcripts, regardless of your age. Um, so I would highly recommend, and any university strongly encourages, all transfer students to have 60 units minimum. So that's the goal, go for the 60 units. That's my recommendation. Students will also need to complete transfer major prep courses, which are critical to admissions in many transfer majors. That's absolutely true. You wanna make sure you have your general education classes and your major coursework completed um, because a lot of our majors out there at the UCs and Cal States are already considered impacted. So they're pretty tough to get into. So you wanna make sure that you are, you are um, making yourself um, pretty much like you know, one of the best candidates out there. And by doing that, you wanna make sure all of your requirements have been completed. If you are interested in learning more about community colleges, about the UCs, about the CSUs, I strongly encourage you to visit icangotocollege.com. There's so much more information to provide, more than what we can provide in this one hour, which I think we've gone over. So, so I'm sorry about that, but 
Um, there's so much info to provide. Look up I can go to college.com, do some research, come up with a list of questions, reach out to me with those questions. Again, I'm more than happy to help you out um, and help you seek, you know, connect you with any of the Veterans Resource Centers that we have across California. Again, my name is Jessica Peak. Um, so happy to be here with you today. Um, and with East Los Angeles College. And there's my information there. So our number, and um, that is our general email, the veteran services at elac.edu. If you want to reach out to me directly, however, my email is peakj at elac.edu. Thank you for attending today's workshop um, and thank you for your service. Oh, gosh, thank you so much, Jessica. And I love that you had a whole list of what the different names for the Veteran Resource Centers were. I knew you'd have them. So thank you for sharing that. And um, you guys, Jessica gave such great information. And um, if you need help with, you have questions about like, like what, what road you're supposed to start on, because educational careers can be so tricky and everyone's situation is different. That's where you want to reach out to uh, two people like Jessica or um, at other schools have directors too and reach out to them directly or call us and we'll tell you, you know, we think you should call this person that way um, you're not doing this by yourself and um, utilize us. So, okay. Thank you so much, Jessica. And um, uh, we're going to move on to the questions. So we might having you come, uh, might have you come back here. Um, but this is all of our contact information. Um, you guys, all in one spot, we've got Annette, who is the local interagency network coordinator, or the link, um, Jessica's information again, and then um, Jennifer and myself. Um, Jennifer's been putting all these great links in the chat the whole time, um, and she's also been kind of fielding the Q&A tab. Um, Jennifer, um, were there any um, questions or anything you wanted to go over? There was actually quite a bit of questions. Um... <laughs> And I answered a lot of them. There was one that I didn't really know about. I thought maybe Jessica knows about it. Uh, the Birch program. Uh, they were asking if that's the same as FAFSA, the federal program. I've never heard of the Birch program. I've never heard of the Birch program. Um, I would definitely look into that more um, because there are programs out there that will charge you fees um, for financial assistance. I've never heard of Birch. So okay. I would say stick with FAFSA look into birch more maybe even ask um ask you know a college um you know more about that information um but i i would say stick with fafsa um so the next one uh i put in the chat in the chat everybody please look over there copy and paste it um i put in links to the resources of this uh webinar in that document so you can download that document or you can copy and paste from the chat if you want to. We have the uh, chapter 35, which is the dependent program for uh, dependents of veterans with 100% rating. I also put in there uh, the links to the fee waiver. I also put in the chat, uh, the poverty income limits in there for 2022, 2023, 2024 all that good stuff, the changes for that also. Um, if you want, if you don't have a CVSO next to you or you're getting, you're having a hard time getting a hold of your CVSO in order to apply for the Calvet fee waiver, um, Orange County Veterans Service Office, you can apply for the fee waiver right there on their website virtually. Don't even have to go into an office. They have a tutorial, a video on how to do it, all the ins and out of the fee waiver also. So I wanted to mention that. Uh, we did get one question while I was talking here. Uh, somebody just says, thank you. They need to leave. Um, you can, if you have to leave, no problem. Uh, give us a call if you need anything else. Uh, let me see. Is there anything else I want to cover that a lot of people had questions about? Um, I put in the chat 888-GI-BILL-1. A lot of you have specific questions about your transferring of your GI Bill benefits or if you can use a GI Bill benefit with the STEM or yellow ribbon um, or a lot of different specific questions to your uh, GI Bill. Some of you guys are not sure if you have the Montgomery, the post 9-11 or the forever, call 888-GI Bill-1. They answer the phone. They're very, very knowledgeable. They can tell you exactly what you have, what's been transferred over to you, all that good stuff. One other thing, the CalVet fee waiver is only for dependents of veterans with a disability rating. It is not for the veteran, unless the veteran has a parent who is also a disabled veteran. I think that about covers, oh, we got some more questions. 
Uh, somebody says, thank you very much. If my local VSO does not respond, make, yes. So yes, uh, Orange County County Veteran Service Office. I can put that in the chat. Those, uh, you can apply for the fee waiver there. Um, and that's it. So yeah, I'll put that in the chat right now, the Orange County website. So that uh, if you're having a difficult time, you can apply there. You can apply anywhere and you can go to any CVSO. You're not um, connected or you're not bound to one CVSO. So I think that's it on my side. Jenny, you want to take over? Sure. And just kind of piggyback off of that. Um, I, I was just going to mention that yeah, you can call any CVSO in California if for some reason, you're having a problem getting a hold of the one that is close to you, call us. Um, remember, there's that 800 number that's listed, but also it's on the back of the resource book. But um, call us and we can help you find another office. We'll look it up for you. So uh, we do that all the time. So um, I can always go back to this screen if needed, um, but with our contact information. Uh, also, that was the survey as well. You guys will probably get an email about the survey too from signing up um, on Eventbrite. Um, real quick, um, I know we've gone over a little bit of time, but so much great information. So thanks to everybody that has stuck on and to our presenters too. Um, these are some of the um, workshops we have coming up. Um, it's going to be the same as this one. It's going to be over Zoom. Um, these are the dates and some of the topics. The reason why I have um, the workshop that's going to be at Presidio, Presidio of Monterey bolded is because um, normally when we go to military bases, um, we make a three hour long presentation and we go over all of the different modules. We go over all of the CalVet benefits more in detail. We have, um, we usually have a VSO that comes from one of our CVSOs. Um, we, so we have um, one of the links always comes to depending on um, where we are. So um, um, it's a really, it's a three hour long presentation. I know that's long, but it's all of our benefits in detail. So it's really great if you guys want to attend that. And we never record those. So the, uh, it won't be recorded, obviously, but it will be live on webinar. So you are able to attend that. It's the same thing. You just sign up on Eventbrite like you did this one. So, and then there's um, lots of other really great topics coming up too. So, um, and if you sign up on the My Calvet, you'll get weekly emails or a quarterly um, or monthly newsletter. I'm not sure which one we're going to here, but um, you'll get a newsletter and it'll say, um, it'll say what, what um, webinars are coming up. So, um, and then again, here's our contact information. So um, thank you guys so much for, I'll go back to our, um, that slide. Um, thank you guys so much for your time and for coming on today. Um, we really just want you to know that we are here for you for the long haul and Whatever questions you have or, or resources you need, please contact us. You're not alone. You don't have to go through um, any of this stuff alone. And we are here as resources and uh, we want to help. So um, thank you for your time. And um, we hope to hear from all of you. And also thank you to all of our um, speakers too. Jessica and Annette, you guys were so amazing, of course. And Jennifer, as always, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.